In this section, you will first learn what coincidence is. Then we will conduct an experiment to measure photons in so-called coincidence mode. Let's start with learning what coincidence actually is. In science, coincidence is the presence of two signals at the same time. In our experimental setup, coincidence means that both scintillation detectors measure a photon at the same time. Now, how precise is that measurement? In our case, at the same time means that there are maximum 4 microseconds between the first signal and the second signal. To fully understand the principle of coincidence measurement, we will play the coincidence card game. It works as follows. I will show you two cards in each measurement round. Each card represents one of the two detectors. On each card is listed whether there is a photon signal or no photon signal. You will also see the energy of the detected photons. For example, on this card a photon is measured with an energy of 457 kV. However, the energy information is not important in our case. We just focus on whether there is a photon signal or not. Coincidence occurs when both detectors measure a photon signal. In the following coincidence card game, you will see one card for both detectors in each measurement round. Then, please decide whether there is coincidence or not. Well done! Now you're ready for our second experiment. As in our first experiment, we will use the predict, observe, explain method. We will measure photons coming from the sodium-22 source with our measurement software in coincidence mode. That means we will wait 100 seconds and count how often both detectors measure a photon at the same time. We will call this number the coincidence count. And we will compare two different angular configurations, namely 90 degrees and 180 degrees between one detector, the source, and the second detector. For which setup do you expect a higher coincidence count? Make a prediction based on your knowledge about the transformation process of sodium-22. Did you make a prediction? Great! Now let's make an observation. We have the radioactive source here and one detector here. Additionally, I have placed the second detector at 90 degrees angle to the first detector and the radioactive source. Now I start the measurement with the software in coincidence mode and I let it run for 100 seconds. The output diagram shows the coincidence count. That means how often both detectors measure the photon at the same time. Our measurement is over and this is our result. Second, I have placed the detectors at 180 degrees angle with respect to the radioactive source. Now I start the measurement again and I let it run for 100 seconds. The output diagram shows the coincidence count. Our measurement is over and this is our result. For which setup did you observe a higher coincidence count? Did your prediction match the observation? In any case, let's explain our observation. The positrons emitted by the sodium-22 annihilate with electrons of the surrounding and they can transform into two photons. We assume that the positron and the electron were at rest right before they annihilate. That means that the total momentum was zero. Because of momentum conservation, 
the total momentum of the two photons that are produced in the annihilation process will also be zero. And this is only possible if the photons move in exactly opposite directions. Consequently, the second configuration with a 180 degrees angle between the two detectors and the radioactive source will lead to a much higher coincidence count. But how can we explain the coincidence count in the first configuration with the 90 degrees angle? The coincidence count was much lower than in the 180 degrees configuration, but still it was not zero. This coincidence count can be explained by random coincidences. For example, imagine that two positrons annihilate with two electrons more or less at the same time. Now the two photons of the first annihilation fly up and down. But the two photons of the second annihilation fly to the left and to the right. In this case our detectors would detect photons at the same time even in the 90 degrees configuration. But these two photons come from two different annihilation processes. However, it is not very likely that this happens. Therefore, the coincidence count in the 90 degrees configuration is still much lower than in the 180 degrees configuration. To sum it up, the created photons move in exactly opposite directions. Consequently, the coincidence count is much higher when the angle between the two detectors and the radioactive source is 180 degrees. Did your prediction match the explanation? Well done! Oh, and one more important thing. The line along which the two created photons move in opposite directions is called line of response. When two detectors measure two photons in coincidence, we know that somewhere between them Somewhere along this line of response, annihilation of positron and electron and creation of two photons might have happened. But we do not know where exactly along this line of response. You will need this information in the next section, in which you will use coincidence measurements to locate a positron source in our virtual patient like in a real PET scan.